In the last decades, many sclerofixation techniques were developed. We had Marburn Lewis, Auger Wall, Scaria, and Yamani. But is it possible to develop a new, safe, and effective technique for IOL sclerofixation? We believe you have the answer. Using the double flange suture presented on the 2017 ASCRS Film Festival and based on Yamani's and Malbrum's technique, we started our tests. The whole idea was to try to be more effective and make the learning curve for the surgeons fast and easy. A sclerotomy of 2mm from the limbus was made on one side, and here you can see a 26 gauge needle pulling out the 5.0 proline suture from the sclera. The other end of the proline, we pass it through the haptic eyelet of the IOL and made the first flange. With the IOL still out, we repeated the procedure on the other side and made the second flange. Then, we inserted the IOL in the eye and with the help of a forceps, we made it the right adjustments to center the IOL using the prolines. Once the IOL was positioned properly, we cut the proline 2mm from the base and made the third flange on one side. Then, we repeated that on the other side and made the fourth flange. After that, we pulled in the flanges into the sclerotunnel to avoid iritis and inflammation. After testing throughout 2018, we had our results published on the Cornean Journal in 2019. But is it possible to replicate this technique with a photo by IOL? We tried out in different ways, punching a hole in the IOL in both horizontal and vertical axes, for example. We even produced a tool to punch the holes in the IOLs. However, our tests punching the holes in the IOLs were not 100% efficient, therefore, we do not recommend it. What's the best way to perform the four flange technique with a foldable IOL? And then we thought, why not the Acreos IOL? We went back to the drawing board and based on the four-point interscleral fixation with Gore-Tex, we have the idea to adapt the four-flange technique to have all the flanges in the sclera. The technique with the flanges, there are no knots, no flaps, and the proline is way cheaper than the Gore-Tex. Here we use a 6.0 proline suture and a 29-gauge needle to assist taking the proline out on the other side. After that, you go through the eyelets, first down and up and down again, up to the point where the IOL and the wire are aligned like this. Now we insert only one side of the proline, the left side here, and we insert the IOL inside the eye using a burrata forceps. Observe the positioning of the IOL. Only then can we insert the other side of the proline through the sclera. It's very important to give notice to that. The next step is to make the first and the second flanges from the bottom. And at this point, you are able to move the IOL for setting it up better in the eye. In the last part, we make the third and fourth flanges from the top and adjust the IOL. In this other example here, in a surgery performed by Dr. Kachikian, we can see how efficient the technique is, even when fixating an artificial iris. We have to remind it's imperative that we insert the flanges inside the sclerotunnel to prevent ophthalmitis and erosions. But there's still one question to be answered. Is it possible to improve the four-flange technique and solve the trailing haptic issues on Yamani's technique? This is the new foldable IOL. The new IOL has been manufactured in hydrophobic acrylic and with four eyelets. You can observe that we pass the proline through the eyelet like a shoelace and make the first flange. Then, you repeat the procedure on the other side and you can see that we have an adjustable haptic that can be easily inserted inside the eye. The shoelace-like arrangement is the big deal about this new IOL. It's what makes the IOL stable. Time for the lab test.
In our lab test, you can observe that we pass the five points we're pulling searcher through the eyelet. First up, down and make the first flange. You can see on both sides how you can easily adjust the proline suture in the haptic. After inserting the eye well in the eye with the help of Brado forceps, you are able to adjust the eye well inside the eye. This new concept of eye well with four eyelets and the shoelace arrangement allows the proline to come off horizontally, making the eye well stable. What didn't happen when we punched one hole on each side of the other one piece eye wells. After that, we cut the suture 2mm from the bottom on both sides and make the third and fourth flanges, inserting the flanges inside the sclera. Observe how stable the eye well is. Is it possible to develop a new injector for this eye well? For the first time in ophthalmology, we present this new concept of injector, with a gap on the top, that allows the adjustable haptic to be inserted in the eye properly. It opens fully, and it can be easily removed, sparing the use of apparato forceps in the process. Is the double flange with polypropylene suture used on the four flange technique safe? The new technique seems to be stable, as you are able to observe, even when the haptic breaks down, the flanges hold on steady. We also made tests simulating the sclera, and you can see that the flanges are stable. In this chart, we have 48 patients, 22 with a PMMA IOL, 12 with Acurus IOL, and 14 with CTS. On this image, you can observe the acoustic shadowing of the proline on the sclera. In the second UBM, you can see that the haptics do not touch the iris. And the third one is showing how well-centered and stable the eye well is. The complications were as expected on average for sclerofixation literature, with one retina detachment, two flanged inflammations as you can see in the picture that have been treated reducing the size of the flange and reinserting inside the scleral tunnel, three tilted IOLs, and three small vitreous hemorrhages. What are the conclusions we have reached? We keep on going with our research, but at this point, we can say that the technique with a PMMA eye well has been stable. We do not recommend punching the eye well in any axis, it's not stable. The surgeries that were made with acrios or similar eye wells have shown to be stable, and the tests in the wet lab with the new eye well and the new injector will happen in the following period to come. We intend to present the results soon.